Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this tutorial on BTC Pay Server. This, the point of this tutorial is just to get you an easy, basic understanding of how to use it, whether that's because you know somebody else set up the server for you, or if you're just wanting to, to get to know how to use it better. I, I found a lot of guides where kind of went a little bit too technical or, or too light, and so this is this is goal of this tutorial is to get it in the center. Uh, so. With that said, once you have the server set up or once it's activated, simply go to its address and you'll be met with this nice BTC pay server log. And what you're going to do is you're going to create your account if you haven't already, and then you're, you're just going to log in. All right, once you get logged in, the first thing you're going to need to do is create a store. All right, and the store is just like it. Think of like an instance. Think of it like a browser window, right, where you can have multiple different stores. So if you're running a point of sale system, you can have that running. You create a store for that. If you're running an e-com business, you could create a separate store for that, and it'll all be processed through the same BTC pay server. So you just don't have to have a bunch of different pay servers running simultaneously. So for this store, let's call it test store. A uh, very, very creative name. A default currency, USD. You can type in whatever currency uh, from whatever region you're in. And then preferred price source. This is just, you know, which, which database do you want to select pricing from? I, I find CoinGecko is pretty good overall, so I, I don't mess with that. And boom, congratulations. You have just created your first store. All right, so once that's done, you're going to need to set up a wallet. Now, what you could do is uh, connect it with a hardware wallet. So if you have a Trezor, if you have something along those lines where you like a USB that you actually plug in, and this is where you go to connect that. You can import it from a file, extended public key, wallet, QR code. It honestly depends on what type of wallet your service you're using because they, they interface different ways. But the basic idea is that you connect it. For this tutorial, we will be using the other option, which is uh, I don't have a wallet. And this enables you to just create a nice, easy, hot wallet. All right, now this is the probably one of the most important parts of any wallet setup, is you're going to want to write a, all these words down in sequential order. Write them down on a piece of paper in the exact order. Do not photograph it, do not store it digitally. Yeah, I cannot stress how, how important this is. If it's on your phone and your phone gets hacked or stolen, they'll be able to access all your money, right? If you store it digitally and then, you know, gets hacked or stolen, you're, you're going to be lost. You're going to lose that bullet. When you write it out, make sure you store this piece of paper in a secure place. I, if you store, you know, other secure documents for your business or personally, just store it in a secure place. Make sure that the writing is legible. Because if you lose this phrase, you will not be able to recover the wallet. All right, so once you do that, uh, you're going to write to say, I have written the, down the recovery phrase and stored it in a secure location. You just set up your, your first hot wallet. And you can start sending and receiving money. To receive it, you just BTC address. You can scan it with your QR code if you got a wallet on your phone. Uh, or, or you could just copy this link and send money that way. Uh, so after that, you could start setting up your Lightning node. And all the Lightning network is, it's just a second layer Bitcoin solution. I know that sounds a little jargony. Essentially, all it means is that you get Bitcoin faster. However, less people tend to use it. So you're going to get less use out of it, but the, there's better transaction fees and it's practically instantaneous. So that's really great. Uh, however, it is still under development, which is why you get this, you know, please understand that it's still under active development and considered experimental. So it's just something to be aware of. And all you do is hit save and you've already got your lightning network. All right, so that's how the basics of getting it set up. Uh, congratulations, you are ready to start, you know, sending and receiving uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so to, to actually do that, what you're going to want to do is go to requests. All right, and you just create a payment request, give it a title. Let's let's stick with our creative uh, semantics here and go with test request. Uh, kind of rhymes, I like it. Give it amount. Let's let's give it twenty bucks. I'm feeling generous. Currency USD, and then expiration date. I I typically don't put an expiration date. Again, if it works in your business, you do it. Email email is only going to work if you set up your email server, which we'll get into later. But for now, we don't have it set up, so I'm not going to put anything in there. And the description is just you know describe your services. So let's go with that. All right. And then custom CSS, that's that's if you want to get fancy, it's out of the scope of this tutorial, but suffice to say, this is pretty much all you need. Hit create, and it is saved. Once you see this little you know, notification here that says it's saved, you can now view this pay request. 
This is what your your clients or whoever you're giving it to will see. So you can just copy the, the URL and send it to them. Um, you, bam, you can copy a link there, or you can actually print it out. Though, do be aware, if you print it out, the buttons typically don't work on paper. So <laughs> something to be aware of. Um, uh, anyways, so this is what they're going to see. And when they want to pay it, they just select the Pay Invoice button. Uh, now, this button pops up this, this handy little screen. Uh, a couple things to break down, just in case your, your clients have a little questions or a little confused, a little scared. This is kind of what they do. So this right here, awaiting payment, uh, and, it, and it has a timer that's sticking down. That's not supposed to cause anxiety. What it, it really does is it just keeps a price up to date. So when the timer takes winds down all that means is that's just going to update it with uh, the new price of you know bitcoin so twenty dollars a bit worth of bitcoin in you know 15 minutes it's going to update it that, that's just a control for volatility it's an amazing feature now this other button down here you can choose this is remember you're setting up the lightning network this is where they can choose to pay with lightning or they can choose to pay with bitcoin honestly doesn't matter and then this is this just tells you you know the name of the store the order amount and if they've already paid any part of it it's going to tell them there this is the conversion rate from one bitcoin to, to one to many usd uh, and then down here we got the option for qr code so again if they're paying on their phone they can pull this up they can just scan it with their phone and they can pay that way if they're paying it visually like on their wallet you just go over to the copy button and they can copy this link and then put paste it in you know their their wallet and then send it that way so that's pretty much how this works and one more thing you'll notice is when you click the pay invoice it'll tell you the status about the payment in which we didn't pay anything so you know that nothing happened there but if it did it would fill up and so what's great about this is that they don't have to pay one amount in one time they can pay it over a, a series of payments if that's what works best for you all right, so that's how to as get requests. And then a, a copy of that will be stored in invoices. So you'll see that this new invoice was just created. It's The status is new. Check out, check out just the, the screen right here where they can pay it. And details, this just gives you more of a breakdown of, of what it is. And of course, you can add information and customize all this stuff uh, to see whatever works best for your workflow. It honestly depends on how you, you run your business. Here's another cool feature. So... Say, for example, you get an angry client and you need to give them a refund. How are you going to do that? You can they actually have the ability to create those refunds. I give the name of the, the pull payment, which just means refund. You, you say uh, test refund. Again, really creative here. Amount, say, let, let's, let's say 10 bucks. And refunding services. Okay. And create. And then you can view it. And, oh, we, we forgot to uh, claim it was in Bitcoin. But then you uh, enter in their email, their, not, not their email, their address here, and then hit claim funds, and then it'll, it'll send them, you know, $10 in BTC. Or you can say $5, right, if you want to break it up into payments. If, if $10 is just not what you can afford right now, you can you can cut it in half to, to 5 bucks. All right, so that's how you refund people. Pay button, don't ig ignore this. I, I haven't needed to mess with this um, apps. So this button right on here, this enables you to create point of sale applications or crowdfunding. Um, it just makes it easy so that you know you can raise funds or you, if you have actual hardware, you can you work with that. We're not going to get in that just today. If that's something you guys want to hear more about, put something in the comments. All right, so plugins. Pl plugins enable you to add more features, so you can. You know, install the the white paper available to on your BTC pay server. It's just honestly, it's a great place. You've got Shopify, you can easily link that. There's Lightning Node stuff. There's style things. It's it's just great. All right. So, and if you want to change any of the settings, you can go to, to settings. Obviously, this gives you a store ID, just a way to identify your store name, website. If you got a website, you can put that in there. And then, so remember that, that that expiration time period, right, where it resets the price? Well, you can increase or decrease it. You can also make it invoice paid even if the paid amount is, is less than expected. Uh, and I actually I actually like doing um, 1%. That's how you do a percent. I do 1% because just in case they're slightly underneath it, whether that's because of fees or something going on with the network, maybe it takes longer and the price changes. Whatever the case is, I like to put just a little bit of buffer in there. All right, so this is where you can set up your email server. 
It honestly depends. This is a little bit more technical than the scope of this tutorial. But essentially, you can have your own email server. This is good for A, sending emails directly to your clients, right? So you don't have to like copy a link and then put that in an email and then send it out. You can just have it automated. And also for password recovery, because currently, if you forget your password, you got to, you can reset it, but you have to use it from the command line. That's again, a little bit more technical. Rates, again, this is kind of stuff we set up at the beginning. Uh, checkout appearance, uh, th you can, this is again where you can customize it. You can customize HTML, custom logo, all of that access tokens uh, this is for apis users this is where you can you can add if you got you know team or accountants or... all right integrations so this is again where you can set up you know sh link lightning address or shopify integrations you have there's a little bit more options down there webhooks same thing so that's pretty much how you see pay server works if you found this useful if you have questions or comments just let us know in the comments down below and if a btc pay server is something you would like to set up in your own business so there's uh, going to be a link in the description go follow that and uh, we'll see if we can work together because this is this is the future and having the ability to self-host and self-fund your own payments is absolutely transformational. Anyways, that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.